Welcome, friends, to uh, another service here from the Valleytown Cemetery Chapel. Uh, it's time to start having church again. And we've got a few here this morning. I know we thank God for that, but it's time that I, that the rest of the church members get back in church. It's time to start having church. Uh, we're gonna go over our prayer list. We need to remember Scott Jacobs from Oregon. He has cancer, and it is spreading to his brain. And his wife told me last week that. Uh, he only has six to 12 months to live. Now that's according to the earthly doctors. But I know another doctor that can wipe away this cancer. We need to be praying for Brother Scott. We need to be praying for John Whitaker, who's also in bad health. We need to pray for uh, uh, Sister Burnell. Uh, she had fail, uh, fell a couple months ago and uh, she's getting better but we need to remember her in our prayers we need to remember brother Jackie Anderson sister Joy Burt I think she's at home now and her and Robert is <coughs> doing good uh, I uh Looked down on Robert's Facebook page this morning and he's back at home doing good. He's been going through physical therapy and uh, he's uh, doing real good. And uh, we, we need to remember them in prayer. That's Brother Robert Burt and Joy Burt. They live in Danielsville, Georgia. And uh, we're so proud that they've overcome this this COVID-19 and we just praise the Lord that he's worked through them and healing them remember uh, Kathy Mayberry she's at home now she's uh, getting around on a cane but she's on her way to uh, better health days need to remember Louise Queen who had a fall a few weeks ago and remember Tammy's grandmother Marie Payne she's back in the hospital and uh, we need to send up prayers for her and uh, our singing is going to be on uh, June the 13th that'll be on a Saturday night at 6 p.m. And our guest singers that night will be the Smoky Mountain Singers from Topton and the Hodgett Brothers from uh, Hiawassee, Georgia. And we want everybody to come out and be with us that night on uh, June the 13th. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, that we have to stand here today. Lord, we're few in number. But Lord, you said for two or three are gathered, Lord, that you would be in the midst. And Father, I just praise you for the ones who made the effort to come out to church this morning. God, I wish every member was here. And Father, I know it's time to start having church. And Lord, I just pray that each and every member would be here next Sunday, Lord. Father, I just thank you for all you've done in my life. Father, we pray for these who are on our prayer list. Brother Scott Jacobs, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would touch him and heal his body, Lord, from his cancer. God, it's only you can. Father, we pray for Sister Joan and Sister Vanell, Lord, that you would touch them. Lord, touch Brother Jackie this morning, Lord. Give him a special blessing. Lord, I pray for Pastor Robert and his wife, Joey Bird, that, Lord, that you would touch both of them. 
Lord, send them a mighty blessing this morning. Father, be with Kathy. Lord, is she's on her way to being healed. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would touch her body this morning. Father, Sister Louise, Lord, I pray that you would touch her. And Father, Granny Payne, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would touch her this morning. God, be with the doctors and the nurses that's taking care of her, Lord. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that she would be able to return home very soon. Father, bless the church. Bless the songs that sung this morning. And Father, bless the message that you've given me this morning, God. May it be for somebody out there that's lost, Lord. Lord, I pray that someone would hear this message, Lord, and come to know you as their personal Savior. Father, we give you the honor and praise and glory for all of these. And we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. I heard an old, old story How a Savior drained from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning All his precious blood He has 
built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He runs me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Each day I'll do a golden deed by helping the ones who are in need. My life on earth is but a span, and so I'll do. I'll help 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Fathers, I come to you this morning, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would use this message for thy glory. God, I pray, Lord, that there be someone listening today within the sound of my voice, Lord. God, that these words would enter their heart, God, and eat at them, Lord, until they bow down before you to the throne of mercy. Father, I realize, God, we have to come to Calvary when we have to kneel and ask Jesus to come into our life. Repent of all of our sins, Lord, before. But God, I know that there's not a soul out there, Lord, that you can't save Lord Father I just pray that this message will not go void but Father I pray Lord that you would use it for thy glory in Jesus name Amen the most simple message in the world the most simple scripture in this Bible is John 3.16 and every one that's saved ought to have this this verse, John 3, 16 memorized in their heart not just their mind but in their heart For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life you know the greatest joy is giving your life to God after you're saved the greatest joy to me is seeing someone give their life to God I tell you what, if you're in a room, you don't have to be at church to accept God. You can be anywhere. You can be in your living room. You can be at a family reunion. You can be driving down the car, down the road in your car. You can be saved anywhere when God convicts your heart. When God convicts your heart. All you have to do is pull over if you're driving, wherever you may be, get down on your knees, and cry out to a merciful God, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've, son I've done so many wrong things in my life, Lord, but I'm asking you to forgive me. <coughs> <coughs> save me. I want to serve you. That somewhere along the lines of what you need to say when you ask God to save you. I can't tell you what to say. I can't pray the prayer for you. It's got to come from your heart. 
You know, verse, let me open my Bible back up here. Verse 19 says, And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You know, everything that's wrong has to do with darkness. <clears throat> Why do they have seances of a night? Because it's dark. They can't have a, se a seance in the daytime because it's light. Satan loves to work in darkness. You know what a seance is? It's witchcraft. I remember a TV show that I watched growing up, and it was real funny, I thought at the time. It's called Bewitched. And <laughs> looking back on it, That TV show was one of Satan's tools to get us to laughing about the dark side of life, about his side. And if we laugh about it and, and get to watching it, then we're condoning that lifestyle. If we watch anything that is contrary to God's Word on TV, we're condoning that sin. There's a TV channel that's very popular with a lot of folks today. It's called the Logo Channel. I don't know exactly what the two O's stand for, but I know what the L and the G stands for. It's lesbians and gays. And they put a lot of old time comedy shows on that people love to watch. But that's how Satan works. He lulls us into his channel by having shows like uh, Mama's Family. Uh, I don't know what all they have, the Archie Bunker, All in the Family and Sanford and Son, all those shows that people used to really like to watch. But see, that's God's way of luring the sin, or excuse me, that's Satan's way of luring us in to the dark side of life. We need to watch what we're doing. We need to watch where we go, what we watch, what we allow our kids to watch. Because when Satan pulls our kids into darkness, they start getting into other things. And as Christians, we have an obligation to keep that stuff out of our homes. But my main point today is God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him in him, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, it don't take a rocket scientist to, to figure out that you need God in your life.
Beth, can you get me some water, please? It don't take a very smart person to figure out that the most, the best decision they'll ever make in their life is their decision to accept Christ as their personal Savior. I can't imagine life without Christ. I have to lean on Jesus every day of my life. Satan throws stuff at us every day. But I, I can't make it without Jesus. The only thing I can do without Jesus when Satan throws stuff at me is just throw up my hands and quit. Because I don't have no power. But Jesus Christ has power over Satan, over hell, over death. Anything that comes Anything Satan throws at you in life, Jesus has the power to defeat it. Anything. I don't care what Satan throws at you. I'm so thankful that I can call Jesus Christ the Lord of my life my Savior, my Redeemer, the King of glory, the Lord of lords. You know, I made a statement when this virus started going around that I had enough faith in God that he would carry me through this pandemic. And he has. I know it's not over. I realize that. But it is time to start having church. It is time that our members get serious with God and gets back in church. I believe God's got something for this church. He's got some plans for this church. But those plans can't be carried out if everybody ain't here. I don't know what it is. He's not revealed that to me. But God has plans for this little church. And those plans can't be carried out with empty pews. We say we love God. And we say that we thank Him for His blessings. But look at the pews. Lots of words right now. I'm not trying to make nobody mad. I'm just trying to st strike a fire. <coughs> this church can really do things for God, but it can't do it with empty pews. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, five, six people here today. And it's a lot better than what I expected. But I thank God that we've got a few faithful that wants to have church, wants to obey God. God's been showing me some things. And if our members don't come in and start getting active in church, I'd hate to be in their shoes. I'd hate to have to answer to God for that. I was told when I first started coming up here that this church never shut down. But I guess things change with the times. It's breaking my heart to see these empty pews. But I know the same God that saves is the same God that forgives. And I just I just want to say I hope everybody's here next Sunday. Mothers are a blessing. It's a blessing to have a mother. I wish my mother was still living. I said that a while ago. I'd give anything to place a rose on my mother's shirt collar. And tell her how much I love her. You know, it takes a special person to be a mother. Just about any woman can have a kid. But I've seen so many moms walk off and leave their kids. I've seen so many moms send their kids to grandma and grandpa because they don't have time. That's not a mother. A mother takes care of her kids. Her, a mother puts her kids before herself. And most mothers even puts their husbands before themselves. It takes a very special woman to be a mother. And I hope our members are here next Sunday to show that love to the mothers in this church. I hope all of our mothers are here next Sunday so all of us can show the love that they deserve. I'm probably going to get some slack off this message. But this is what God gave me for this morning. And I'm not going to answer to God for not, not preaching what He gives me. I don't want that kind of whipping. I've never had that kind of whipping, but I don't want one. I don't want to see what God can do for not minding it. I know what God can do for not minding it. But if God gives me a message and I don't preach it, I don't want to have to go through that. <clears throat> if you don't like today's message, 
go talk to the manager. God manages this church. And as long as I'm here, he always will. That's what God gave me this morning. And if you're out there lost this morning, and you want to ask God into your heart, you may be listening to this on your phone, on Facebook, as you're driving down the road. Find a place to pull off. Get out of that car. Get down on your knees. And ask God, come into your life. If you're at home in your living room or bedroom, wherever you may be, get down on your knees and ask God to come into your life. You know, you can't go through Mother Murray You can't go through Mohammed. You can't go through Buddha. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. The man who died for our sins that we could live again. And on the third day rose again. And then ascended into heaven, sitting on the right hand of his Father, just patiently waiting for God to say, Son, go, go get my children and bring them home. Don't forget our singing on June the 13th. We start at 6 o'clock with the Smoky Mountain Singers from Topton and the Hobbit Brothers from Hiawassee, Georgia. And uh, come out at 6 o'clock. Come out next Sunday at 10 o'clock. Hopefully we'll be having Sunday school. <coughs> followed by Morning worship, honoring our mothers, precious people, our mothers. Until next week, God bless you. Amen.